Welcome everyone. We just came out of executive session. Um, no decisions were made. No action was taken. So we're going to move right into our uh, regular business, uh, workshop meeting at this time. Um, first item is the district superintendent salary cap advocacy letter that was all passed along to all of us uh, from Putnam North and Westchester BOCES. They're asking us to um, basically advocate for uh, the district superintendents. Their salary is capped right now, or it has been, um, and it hasn't changed. The cap hasn't changed in quite a few years. So looking to um, move that cap a little bit. And quite honestly, the district superintendent um, that works with us, Jim Ryan, he acts as a liaison between uh, all the districts and state ed. Um, he does, he's very instrumental, helpful, um, but we thought we'd put this on here to get everybody's uh, opinion before we actually um, decide if this is something that we're all willing to do. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm willing to uh, do it. I think it's a good idea. It certainly seems to be an issue with retention. Um, so I think it seems like a fair uh, shift of cap. Great. I'm in agreement. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, I think the, the fact that it's been frozen for such a long time, it's just, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, it's, uh, yeah, and we had definitely had experience with how helpful BOCES was and really, you know, the leadership that, you know, Jim provided for that and other efforts, you know, really from our own experience. Okay, so um, I'll take it as we're in favor of um, preparing this advocacy letter. So Ms. Formularo, if you would be so kind to um, prepare it on our letterhead. Okay, sure thing. Can I okay. ask a question? Sure. I, I'm not opposed to it by any stretch of the imagination, and I do think it should happen more than once every 16 years. Um, but given that fact, is the intent that we're going to redo this every single year with the with the the numbers? Is that, or they're just going to look at it again in 16 years and say, "Oops, by the way, we're down to 67 percent. We I need to go up to 98 percent again." I think it's on the table for discussion um, right now at the state level. Um, there's a proposal. So I think that's why this is coming up. This is the first time that I've been on the board that we've been asked right. um, to do this. So, yeah, Just to clarify, I think that there's um, the purpose of the letter is essentially to advocate for a change in the right. uh, way the law or regulation is currently listed and um, clarify how it negatively impacts uh, individuals who are within those positions. So. Um, depending on which way or if uh, it's effective uh, or the group's effective in its advocacy efforts, it, there may be no need to revisit in the, in the future, uh, depending on uh, whether or not the law changes. Got it. So Got the it. issue right now is the law and right. the letter is a position of advocacy for changing the law. Got it. <clears throat> so thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll pass on to Dr. Benante. For his comments. Thank you, Ms. Hammond. I'd like to welcome members of the audience and community who are here with us today. Uh, school is up and running. I think the last time we met was the day before students arrived, so students are on campus now. Uh, we're off to a great start. It's been a little warm, uh, a little humid in our classrooms, but our, our teachers are certainly making the best of it. Um, interesting story. I believe it was the second day of school, and I believe it was Ms. Hawker's class, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, um, a hummingbird flew into the classroom. Mm. So you can imagine, Mrs. Hawker's a first grade teacher, correct, Mr. Wallach? So you can imagine our first graders were quite enamored <laughs> with the hummingbird. Uh, Mr. Stronconi and I gave it our best shot um, to catch the hummingbird. Uh, Mr. Wallach, did you get a shot at it? I did not personally take You did not the take the net. I watched everyone else. You watched everybody else. He watched and probably laughed at us trying to catch the hummingbird. 
Uh, but eventually the hummingbird made its way out the following day, so classroom wasn't too disruptive, uh, disrupted for a period of time, but um, a lot of fun. Yes classrooms on the first few days. Um, so we have a few uh, topics for discussion tonight. The first was a board request uh, to look at our uh, final enrollment figures for the start of the school year. Uh, so those are included in board docs and just for our community members, uh, um, I did not make copies of this, but it's an outline of what our enrollment is at each grade level, kindergarten through 12th grade. Uh, and you'll see that for the elementary school uh, grades, we also included the number of class sections and the average class sizes as they stand right now. I rounded with the average class sizes. Um, so uh, uh, with that, that's for just for informational purposes. But if there's any questions about that, certainly we can spend some time on that right now. I got a question. Um, and I don't know, Dr. Bedante, if this question is for you or for Dr. Sielke or uh, Ms. Sniffen, but, um, you know, we talk a lot about class size in the elementary school, mm -hmm. and we're, we're always, that's, that's a hot topic for us. It's something sure. the board is always concerned <laughs> about, um, making sure that we have these nice, small class sizes. That's, sure. a, big, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, and then we kind of stop talking about it as soon as they hit sixth grade. Okay. Uh, and looking at these numbers, you know, eighth grade looks like a big class, mm -hmm. right, as 84, and 12th grade looks like it's one of those big classes that has 87. Right. Um, so I guess my question is, like, how do we accommodate, do we accommodate as the kids get older? Are there more class sections of classes for these kind of robust grade levels right. or are they just kind of stuck with some more kids in the class? Yeah, and, and maybe it's something that Dr. Silke and uh, Ms. Sniffen can address in their reports uh, <laughs> tonight, what those ranges look like. Uh, because the cut off. Um, usually your art classes at the uh, secondary levels are a little bit smaller uh, because you, um, you know, uh, because in the art studio, obviously you don't have as much space, if you will, and the nature of the student interaction is different. So um, if Dr. Silky and Ms. Sniffen, when they come up, they can speak a little bit to that. I think mm -hmm. that'll help. Um, and in the future, I think as we talk about budget, um, and we start to uh, potentially refer to class size additions or class section additions or reductions, a point that we should look to in addition to elementary class sections and average class sizes is what are a variety of classes currently loaded at, uh, what are section loads uh, uh, through a cross section of classes at the 6 through 12 level as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that would become something that I would uh, include in a, in a budget presentation just so we can see if we are making any reductions or additions to staff, uh, how that is influencing class size uh, or projected class sizes for the following school year. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And basically, um, if you all remember, we were thinking about doing this um, demographic study, oh. and we kind of put tabled that because we had other um, pressing, more pressing. The pipe study is what we decided was more pressing. Um, so maybe something that we should reconsider is really doing that demographic study this year with the allocation that we have. We still have that allocation, and um, for... Yes, for the internal, internal. audit that we, we are, uh, are not uh, required to have, right. but we have the money. So maybe that's... Because overall, um, total enrollment hasn't really shifted dramatically. Um, yes, we do have some bubble classes, but our numbers have been basically the same. Um, right. So, yeah, one uh, thing that a, a demographic study would allow is to us to have some level of predictability with the incoming kindergarten classes. Um, for and usually your enrollment studies are most reliable for the five years after the study is conducted, uh, even though they may span even further than that and look out up to 10 years, if not further. Uh, what would worry me is looking at if we were anticipating having a series of cohorts come in at 35, like the size of our current first grade class, um, and we have graduating classes of 87, you know, 72, 68, that would 
that would uh, be useful information if we were anticipating having fewer students come in than students we have leaving on in some sort of predictable fashion. Uh, we would want to know that because um, it would have implications on the scope of program we would be running in future years. So um, an enrollment study usually provides you with pretty good uh, information to work off of for planning purposes. Um, I had checked, and I believe the last enrollment study we did was some time ago. It was nearly 20 years ago. So, um, you know, we're in a good we're in a good position to to do one now. We also talked about worthwhile. it from um, a, a need, uh, not just a, a number, but you know, how many are we going to be having English language learners yep. um, incoming, and what our our needs might be in that arena sure. uh, to to budget for transportation needs, exactly. things like that. Yeah. Dr. Bernante, can a study like that also take into account the role of um, non-public schools in the area? Yeah. So, for example, like I was surprised to read that the Manitou School, I guess now, is 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 is, is 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 it, which is perfectly, you know, sure. a fine thing yeah. to be happening in the community, and clearly there's a a, a demand for it, but to understand. Um, yeah, the role of that as well. It used to be, I think, I don't know. Do lots of kids still go to Lords? Like half the kids on my street used to go to Lords, right? right? So I don't even, I don't, I don't know. Th those are relevant, not just the demographic, not just the population yes. change, but but these other those drivers. can be incorporated into the study. Thanks. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, the second topic for this evening, uh, I just wanted to comment on the, the school peace officer hiring. So uh, this summer I had met with the uh, Putnam County Sheriff's Office and we talked about the need for and the budgeting for a school peace officer that had happened here uh, through last year's budget cycle. Um, and upon meeting with uh, the County Sheriff's Office, uh, recently, there's been quite the demand for SPOs. Other districts have also um, looked to incorporate SPOs as part of their uh, safety or security processes uh, on, on campus. Uh, so demand is high, um, and they're working on training uh, for an additional class of SPOs. So obviously, we don't have an SPO in place at the start of the school year. We anticipate having somebody around November. Um, so in the meantime, uh, we felt that it was important to accommodate uh, what was defined as a need for additional support um, in the best way that we could. Um, so uh, Ms. Dinio had done some research on other security agencies that were local that could provide, uh, it would be an unarmed uh, but security um, personnel uh, to the school district and contract with that agency for the period of time to fulfill this gap. Um, it's not the same as having an SPO, uh, but at the same time, it does provide an individual who has a law enforcement background, typically, or a military background, um, who's highly qualified to serve in such a capacity in schools. And many schools are utilizing such agencies to, um, uh, for such services. Uh, so you will see later on in the agenda this evening um, the approval or request for approval of U.S. Security Associates, which is a local um, organization uh, who trains individuals to provide such services to uh, schools. And um, uh, we would envision utilizing their services until we had an SPO um, in place. So we felt that was an appropriate measure to take uh, to fulfill this gap now uh, between the start of the school year and whenever we receive our SPO. Because right now we have, like, uh, is there somebody at the door now as a greeter? Correct. And why would we make that shift? Is there a big difference having the security, unarmed security person to versus the greeter for the next six we, weeks? When we posted the position, we did not have an individual who was available for the hours that I believe we were interested in, which was uh, to, like a swing shift, like a 10 to 5 shift. Mm -hmm. um, so we did not have an individual who came forward who wanted to fulfill that shift for an extensive period of time. I see. So we have someone covering it right now, uh, but they don't... Uh, envision doing that for much longer. So okay. given that there is an uh, internal interest uh, in fulfilling that uh, position for an extended period of time, this would now allow us the opportunity to uh, have coverage there. Gotcha. 
And it will only last until we get the SBO. Correct. Although the contract, I just want to point out, is listed for the year. Right. Um, uh, that's just how we chose to set it up because we did not have a definitive date from the SPO as far as when they would start. So if by chance that were to go longer than November, uh, we wouldn't have to reestablish a new contract uh, with uh, U.S. Security Associates. Or if we found that they provided a service that was helpful to us and we had other events that maybe we wanted to bring somebody in for, that contract allows us that flexibility uh, to bring in um, a security guard, if you will, uh, for other events that we may deem. Uh, necessary throughout the year. So the contract is listed for a year. Um, however, it's as uh, determined, the hours are as determined by the school district. So we can choose to use them as much or as little as, uh, as we um, need. Uh, we do have to give them uh, for this initial appointment just advance notice once we have a definitive time for the SPO uh, to notify them that we will no longer be requiring their services as of uh, you know a particular date. But um, uh, the contract seems to be in good order. Okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, third thing I want to discuss was just district committees. We're getting ready to start what I would say is our committee cycle. So we had a great buildings and grounds committee meeting last week, uh, but I also uh, uh, there's quite a few committees that are going to be meeting um, in the near future, and I just want to have a conversation with the board uh, and make sure we're on the same page uh, before we get really far into the committee uh, process. And I think the one district committee that I'm reflecting on uh, and our, I've talked to several members of the community about last year that maybe just drew forth this, uh, um, this need to have a, a bit more of a conversation is our safety committee last year. You know, obviously safety is a hot, uh, you know, is an important topic, I'll call it a hot topic, but there was a lot going on nationally last year uh, that I think, uh, uh, you know, establish that there was a need for a dialogue inside uh, um, uh, inside of our community or within our community. And I think when, if we just reflect back on Parkland, um, years prior to that, Sandy Hook, at times there's a need to have a separate forum to hear community concerns regarding uh, their thoughts and perspectives about the school. And I, I'd like to make sure the board and I are on the same page uh, if something like, a, and I hate, you know, unfortunately I have to refer to it, but if something like Parkland were to occur again and there was a, a sentiment in the community about wanting to discuss that, it may not be best to direct that conversation to the safety committee or to a safety committee meeting. It may need its own space. Um, mm -hmm. And I just want to make sure we're on it, God forbid, something like that were to occur, that we're on the same page uh, with that. Talked a little bit about it at our PTA. We had a PTA meeting last week. It came up there. Um, and, uh, you know, I just think that may be a better approach um, than directing certain conversations just to the committee that may, it may be relevant to the committee, but we may not want, uh, the committee may not be in the best position really to facilitate a dialogue. Um, I'm just envisioning we have uh, eight to ten community members who are coming together within a setting a, an agenda for the year. Uh, they're meeting routinely and working towards, uh, um, you know, meeting whatever their goals or objectives are. And then there's this incident, and I, I don't know if we want the committee to have to uh, handle that. Um, uh, maybe you know the administration has to work separately at addressing that, and then provide the relevant information to the committee. Um, uh, does that make sense? And I, I don't want to, you know, harp on what's happened in the past, but I want to make sure before we get into the school year, we're all on the same page with that, because uh, I think it got in the way of the uh, ineffective committee process last year, at least for for safety. Right, because the committee. I think you're right. The committee develops a community members develop an expertise, a depth right. of knowledge that allows them to more efficiently achieve some specific goals, goals. which we have um, and uh, and and so that would divert them from that attempt right. and I think but at the same time recognizing the importance of providing people with the Space. chance to, to, to communicate their concerns I, I, th I think that makes great yeah. sense really in, good sense in some issues and safety is a good one uh, especially when you have a, a, a traumatic event like uh, Parkland or like Sandy Hook uh, you know, in, in trying to um, approach that, sometimes a, a slow and deliberate mm -hmm. approach is better uh, because there's so much emotion. Um, you know, it's disturbing when you, you hear about, you know, horrible things happening in our schools. Um, and it just needs space and it needs its own time. 
um, to make effective decisions or to really hear or get at what the best action may be uh, moving forward. And, and contrary, sometimes there's issues that come up where the best forum to come and share your opinion on it may be a board meeting as well. We have a public comment uh, opportunity here. And um, you know, I'm not saying that would have been uh, with that particular issue, but you know, I envision there are ones that come up throughout the year. And we may want to just direct people to come and share their perspective with the board and, and have that be that. I mean, the committee meetings in the past, we've basically have um, invited anybody that wants to come, yeah. um, which is fine. However, I think what I'm hearing is you'd like to see some structure, and I think that's oh, yeah. absolutely <laughs> a fantastic idea. Yeah. Um, and maybe we can still allow, um, you know, public participation, but set it up in a way that it's almost right. like this um, right. give opportunity to share concerns or um, what have you but mm -hmm. not everybody is sitting at the table to try to make a decision exactly so uh, good at just reflecting back on last year what I heard is so we had this group of eight to ten individuals who are working together um, they have a rapport with one another um, an incident like Parkland happens and now 40 additional people come to the meeting Right. Okay. so reasonably so um, but now, is it the expectation of the chair of that committee to somehow facilitate a conversation with 40 when we've been having a conversation with 8 to 10? Uh, these are open committee meetings because uh, they're, uh, you know, an extension of the board. Uh, but there should be some parameters established for when that happens. So um, whoever the facilitator or the chair of the meeting may be may have to establish that um, this is an open meeting, uh, but it's not a public meeting. Um, it's a meeting happening in public, uh, which means you're welcome to come and observe, and there may be there's going to be opportunities embedded into this for you to share, uh, but this isn't an open dialogue. Um, if that were to occur, because again, that's a, our, our safety committees, our buildings and grounds committee meetings, uh, these are all uh, open meetings, so community members can go to them. I'm just thinking about process. Mm -hmm. And if I have uh, the sense that there's a group of community members who's really concerned about a particular issue, it very well may just need its own space rather than direct whether they can come to a committee meeting, but it may be best also in conjunction with that to sit down and, and have a, a conversation with them about what their concerns may be. Um, so just as we're getting ready to uh, embark on many uh, uh, of our committees uh, and before, and it, the best time to talk about this is before there's any pertinent uh, issue. Um, uh, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page with that in the event that we encounter uh, such a situation we can uh, it can be constructive uh, it can be a good opportunity for groups to hear each other um, and uh, and it can be helpful towards uh, directing whatever action uh, the administration may recommend to the board uh, if appropriate and also dons on me that with more structure within the committees of you know these eight to ten people are on the committee Rough, yeah. anybody else can come to the meeting and observe it. Maybe there's a public comment section time yep. uh, provided by the committee. Um, I think we also need to talk about how do people get on the committee and who are the sure, people on sure. the committee. It's a good question. Right? Like how Somebody is else asked it, me that this week. you know, how is it, is it advertised? Is it, is there an application process? Mm -hmm. You know, just that whole thing, I think, yeah. is it not that, um, Clear, clear to the public so and I don't know that it's that clear in general it might just be this thing where people are wrangled into it and then you try not to let them go or you know yeah. but um, our so the committee charge outlines a structure of the committee uh, which the board reviews each summer my understanding of the practice uh, here has been that uh, for example uh, if you were identified seven years ago as a community representative from a particular community organization that's outlined in the charge letter, and you've been a part of the committee for seven years, we continue to invite you back. Um, assuming you are you know, the endorsed person for the committee from whatever community organization you may be representing. Um, so we've kind of operated under this uh, um, uh, process of seeing if you still want to be a part of it and if you do you're still on and I think in many cases folks have decided to, to stay on uh, but maybe we want to reevaluate should it be an annual uh, appointment should you have to 
uh, annually uh, indicate your interest. Uh, should we be broadcasting this uh, um, a little bit more publicly? So anybody else who may be a part of that same organization can say, hey, I want to be a part of that too and, and work that out with the um, whatever organization it may be. So no, I think it's a good point, and it's something that's already come up this year uh, with respect to uh, who's on and how do they get on. So each, and how do they get off? <laughs> right. Each um, committee has a charge, and it basically identifies these have been approved by us, right. um, probably haven't been updated. I mean, we approved it the last right. board meeting or July's meeting, yes. the reorg meeting. But maybe it's something that we incorporate with policy um, and taking a look at okay. the people that we're saying should be appointed um, to these committees. Yeah, and also just figuring out and what the current, current practices practice. actually are and does it vary committee to committee about how it really rolls, you know. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure it does. So. Good there. Okay. Lastly, I, I just wanted to um, acknowledge it's uh, Sheriff's Appreciation Week. Oh. And Deputy Shelters is here. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that guy? <laughs> In the corner. Uh, but on, on behalf of our school district, uh, and I'll include the Board of Ed in that, Matt, we just wanted to express our appreciation for your service to our community over the last year. You've been a valued member of our community. Yep. <laughs> Matt's, Matt's an important part of our, uh, I say our team here. Um, you know, he's a visible presence in our school. Uh, he's often with kids, which is what you want to see. Um, I, sometimes I feel badly I'm interrupting Matt with a student when I want to speak with him, uh, which I have to be careful not to do. Uh, but the kids love him. Um, our staff really appreciate you, Matt. And again, uh, we appreciate you. So uh, Sheriff's Appreciation Week. Happy Sheriff's Appreciation Week. And, uh, yeah, thank so. you. And thank you to all um, law enforcement Absolutely. that helps run things smoothly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, that concludes my remarks. Great. Thank you. Moving on to information reports, I'm going to, uh, if you don't mind, go a little bit out of order because I know Mrs. Sniffen has another meeting running in the high school right now, um, financial aid meeting. So if you'd like to go first. <laughs> um, just to go back to uh, the information report in regards to enrollment. Um, so. I'll use a specific example of how it worked um, last year versus this year. So there is a bubble class. Um, it hovers at 90. It's our current senior class. Uh, last year they were juniors. Uh, Eric Richter, perfect example, English teacher. He teaches a section of uh, AP English, teaches a section of Honors English, and he teaches one or two sections of Regents English. Some years we have two sections of AP. Some years we have two sections of Honors. It all depends on the cohort, the course requests and you know, best placement for students. But with 90, we would take that and we would have four sections. Um, I'm sorry, five sections. We'd take the 90 and we would have five sections. Um, that basically could eliminate an elective for Dr. Richter in that given year um, because he's teaching those. Uh, the following year, those t kids now become seniors. Uh, that impacts Nancy Martinez. And it also impacts uh, Ashley Linda, who teaches some senior classes as well. So we have four or five sections of the seniors this year, depending on that enrollment, which may box them out of certain electives that they would offer. So it's the elective that gets cut out when you need more sections of the English classes. Um, yeah, last year, Dr. Richter didn't teach his creative writing class. Um, it was upsetting. It was upsetting to many people. Um, but he just didn't have the FTE in his schedule to be able to do that. Um, this year, Dr. Richter is running the creative writing class. So you can't say the kids never got that opportunity. It may be harder to fit in their schedule this year because of some of the other courses they are taking, um, but you hope then to get them in the following year in the elective. So it tends to hit the electives, if I think That's that kind of probably helpful. answers your question. Yes, thank okay. you. Um, so just a couple Thank yous and a couple congratulations to a few students. Um, Stefan Linson, we were hoping would be here tonight. Um, he has been recognized as a National Merit Scholar semifinalist. Um, this is an incredible honor. Um, only, I think it's smaller than 1% of our nation's seniors get this honor. Um, I'm hoping we will invite him one night here. 
um, to be recognized, but he was not available to be here tonight. So congratulations to Stefan Linson and his family um, for his commitment to his education. Um, this is based on his PSAT scores. Um, that's how you become a semifinalist. And you move on in the process. And uh, Stefan, I'm guessing, will move on in the process. Um, in addition to that, I really want to thank Katrina Fee. Um, September 11th, uh, our current seniors were born. Um, they're probably our last class that was born um, on September 11th, 2001. Um, but our seniors had, our uh, seniors, Katrina, along with the History Club, uh, had created a memorial of just under 3,000 flags in front of the high school um, in memory of every person who lost their life on that day. I'm super proud of the History Club, super proud of those students um, for ensuring we don't forget that day. Uh, so congratulations to, to Katrina on a job well done. Um, we do have a student representative who has come forward um, yes. to work with the Board of Education. Uh, his name is Andrew Nachampkin. I think you all know him quite well. Um, and he is a phenomenal choice for this position. So he um, will be meeting with you guys and meeting with Dr. Benante. But thank you to Andrew, uh, and congratulations to Andrew on that. Lastly, Michael Turner is up in the high school right now. We have over 50 parents in the high school right now at the financial aid workshop. He is from New York State Higher Ed. Uh, he has over 20 years of experience. I am gonna go up there to make sure that the questions don't go till midnight and that he gets home and is willing to come back again next year. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Smith. Thank you. Mr. Wallach. Good evening, everybody. Nice, nice to see some of you who I haven't actually seen since June. Um, Nice that we're all back here. Obviously, our students are back. We're into our third week of school. It seems like we've almost been here forever. Everything's running smoothly. Kids are busy, busy, active learners in their classrooms. Teachers are doing great stuff in their classrooms. I submitted my usual bullet, bullet point list of, of five items. Just want to elaborate on one of them. At the elementary level, and actually as our district as a whole, we really think of ourselves as a community. And what we decided to do to kick off this school year was every class heard the same picture book read by me. Um, it's a book called Be Nice, which is a great title, by Pat Zietlow Miller. It was just written this year, 2018, so no one can say, oh, they heard it before. Uh, we actually, on Superintendent's Conference Day, I read it to our teachers at a faculty meeting, and then starting the second day of school, I went around and spent about 20 minutes with each class reading it. It's a book that's written on a kindergarten or first grade level when, when you look at the words. But when you think of the themes that apply to that book, it really um, applies to any age, not just even students, but, but adults as well. Um, we talked about things that we could do to be nice to our classmates, to be nice to our teachers and other adults at school, to be nice to our parents or relatives, and, and even to be nice to strangers. Um, I did have one boy speak up and say, well, we can't be nice to strangers because of stranger danger. And so we, we discussed some safe ways, holding a door open for someone who's going into the same store that we might be, that even though that person's a stranger, that's perfectly safe to do. So by doing that, I, I really think we're, we're building a, a stronger community, you know, at the elementary school, as well as in our community as a whole. And I think that was a great way to start the school year. So I'm, I'm very happy about that. So that's just what I wanted to share tonight. So thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Silk. So I want to um, share some information about some work that the Middle School Instructional Council has taken on. Um, with the attention brought to school violence last year, there's been also a regional focus on social emotional learning and the idea that mental health is, is very important in the prevention of school violence and violence in general. Uh, NYSED nice put out some new benchmarks for mental health in health education, and the Middle School Instructional Council w had been meeting to discuss uh, the ongoing strategic plan, and around February and March, uh, it started to bubble up that we really could stand to look at our SEL program. So currently we have Second Step as the curriculum for our SEL program, and it's delivered in through different avenues in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. 
and it's so it's not universally de delivered. It's a good curriculum. It is getting a little bit dated. So the Middle School Instructional Council spent the tail end of last year just increasing their awareness of what programs are out there. So they looked at everything from advisory to DBT to PBIS to ruler to just name a few. Um, we brought this to the faculty and we presented what we were working on to the to faculty at large and had several conversations and the SEL committee, the, the, the middle school instructional committee decided that the SEL focus should be universal. So we're looking into PBIS, which is positive behavior interventions and supports um, as a possibility. In, at the same time, we came to learn that the ESIT is working on SEL in the elementary school. So we are working to combine our efforts at this um, point so that we can have a, an articulated program for SEL K-8. Uh, this work is just beginning. It's in its infancy. Um, Ruler will still be a component, and it will be expanded in, in our work, so we hope to by the end of this school year have a pilot to roll out of a universal SEL program with ruler embedded so I, I, I'm really excited about it it's it's you know just you know just at, at the point where I could talk with you about it so I wanted to bring that forth um, in terms of enrollment, Pretty much what, what Ms. Sniffen said applies to the middle school as well. We haven't had to pull back an elective. Um, we have four core teachers running classes on a rotation. So in our, in our larger class of 84, that's about 21 students per class. On average, though, most of our classes are 16 to 18 students, which is a good place for class size. So, thank you. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Sandler. OK, great. So I have uh, Mr. Salem's uh, report this evening, um, and I just want to go through a couple of things. Homecoming weekend will begin on Thursday, September 27th, uh, and all of our varsity teams will have a home game or match between the 27th and the 29th at the end of the month, which is a really nice uh, experience for our kids. We would like to think of homecoming as an experience for all of our kids who are involved in interscholastic athletics. Um, and uh, Chris has done a great job in organizing that, obviously scheduling all of our teams in a three-day window is no easy uh, task, and he's worked really hard to, to make that happen. With uh, one field. With one field, right. <laughs> <laughs> one field. Uh, the Athletic Hall of Fame dinner will be on Saturday, September 29th, so it's like the culminating event on, hall of, um, on homecoming weekend. And if you're interested in attending, please sign up. The memo uh, or notice is on the district website. I'll be attending. I look forward to seeing everyone there. Um, and uh, Mr. Salem wanted to send a congratulations to our varsity volleyball team on coming in second place at the Briarcliff Booster Club volleyball tournament on September 8th. Our girls played extremely well uh, and defeated teams that were in a variety of uh, class sizes. So our uh, girls were playing uh, AA schools um, as well as A schools and B schools, and they um, finished in second place, which is really outstanding. Uh, teams off to a great start this year. Great. Thank you for that update. Mm -hmm. At this time, we'll open the floor to any communication from the public. Nope. Okay. Moving on to consent agenda minutes. May I have a motion? Motion. So, second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Consent agenda financial. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. Questions, comments? This is the um, contract for the security services that Dr. Benante correct. spoke about earlier. So this is going to start on October 1st? Uh, that's correct. That's when they're available. So we're filling the gap uh, between now and then uh, with our own internal staff. But on October 1st, they will start. Got it. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I make one more comment. Sure. <laughs> I'm sorry, I should have brought this up. I just wanted to clarify, I don't know if it was in my um, recommendation, that the funds that are being committed to this um, are covered under budget uh, because we're not currently paying for a school uh, peace officer. Uh, 
Right. Uh, so the contract cost that's listed here is at no additional, it's not uh, at no additional impact. Um, impact thank you, uh, word I'm looking for, um, to the budget um, for this year. Great. Consent agenda personnel. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. Questions or comments? Uh, yeah, Dr. Bernante, could you just talk about the change of the title, appointment of director of facilities to, as opposed to uh, what it was previously, which was director of facilities and transportation, I believe? Uh, the title should be director of facilities and transportation, so there should be oh. a notation there, I'm sorry. And it very well, no, there's no, plenty of space there, so... Um, okay, great. And that could be certainly partly my mistake, because I think even in my recommendation, uh, I refer to director of facilities um, and always leave off the transportation piece. But, oh, okay. Um, it, we're hiring a director of facilities and transportation. That's what their title will be. Very good. Um, and my apologies for the subject not reading that. Okay. That could be the, the name of the civil service list it was pulled from. Uh, it's facilities and transportation. Yeah, it's not Oh, well, the same list is director of facilities, but our title will be director of facilities and transportation. Great. This individual will oversee both. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, moving on to unfinished business district goals. Um, Dr. Benante, would you like to start us off? Sure. So, so I, I. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. <laughs> Unfortunately, John could not join us this evening. His flights got delayed due to the weather. Um, so I'm going to try and incorporate as many comments uh, that I can that John passed along. Sure. So, uh, um, so based on the feedback the board provided uh, last time, I made some subtle updates to the language uh, uh, goal three, including the word community leaders and members that are proactive and predicated on trusting positive relationships. Um, some slight modifications to the other uh, goals. What I, I was really sitting with John's uh, feedback regarding being really clear about outcomes, which is important. Um, I think when it comes to this work, what I struggled with was when you have a goal that's related to process, defining an outcome for that because the outcome is the creation of the process. <laughs> um, that being said, I, I added a layer to this uh, for your consideration, uh, what evidence we could refer to at the end of the year, which can be used uh, to assess uh, effectiveness um, of the implementation of a process or of the goal. Um, I thought that would be helpful in clarifying because one of John's remarks was, well, how do we know um, that this has happened at the end of the year? And in uh, many of these, uh, there should be a variety of things, especially goal one, that we're looking to uh, to demonstrate whether or not this process has been implemented um, and in being implemented, whether or not it's had um, any measurable effect. Um, while over the long term, with respect to goal one, uh, we want to see uh, demonstrable results in student achievement uh, information. We're still going to need more time to talk about, well, what elements of that do we really want to look to beyond the uh, number of AP uh, exams taken or um, uh, state assessment results. So that's going to take a little bit of time, uh, probably going beyond this year. Um, goal two and three, I, I approach similarly. So you'll see I refer to what I think the evidence will be at the end of the year that we would look to to see whether or not we uh, to determine whether or not we accomplish this goal. So that's my broad overview, and certainly I can answer any questions as they uh, come up. Okay, so um, John was in favor of uh, the updates. He did asked that um, he was hoping that goal number three would be slightly more measurable. Um, it's a tough one, right, to kind of put data and numbers and figures to. Yeah. Um, and I think it's something that um, I know in the past we've kind of become more familiar with the way uh, some of the processes work. And I keep referring back to when we said, that's great, we're a blue ribbon school, we're, um, you know, what does that mean, Dr. Bowers? Show us some examples of what we're doing. And it didn't have numbers to it, but there was examples of what we were doing in our schools. Um, 
And I was comfortable with that. Um, and I think you had given an example of um, a student who may not be in favor of reading. Yeah, I was I citing uh, we could have students who are reading at grade level but not be interested in reading at all. Um, conversely, students who are not yet reading at grade level but see themselves growing as readers and really have a strong identity. Um, you can measure that, but that wouldn't necessarily be reflected in uh, state reading assessment results. Uh, but you, and you could argue a student's disposition towards reading is more important over the long term uh, than uh, an assessment result um, on, a, on a state uh, exam. So those are just things kind of broaden, uh, I think, our uh, perspective on this um, or broaden the conversation, given that we tend to see that our students are very high achieving on standardized measures. Um, uh, and other school evaluation measures, but we still have the ability perhaps to look deeper into that uh, and drive our conversation about whether or not we're doing the best we absolutely can by, by our kids over the long term. So those are just some thoughts. I do think, uh, just to add, you know, with respect to uh, goal three, over the long term, I think we may be able to develop a system for measuring that. I just think it's going to take time <laughs> um, uh, to do so. There are uh, surveying methods where you can tap into what the perception is of communication uh, processes and procedures between the district and other uh, groups, whether it be our kids, our parents, uh, other community members at large. I, I just also, you know, hearing some of the feedback of the board, we want to keep these somewhat uh, uh, you know, reasonable at this point mm -hmm. for this year, uh, while in future years we may want to employ a specific mechanism for measuring uh, our performance in this area. And it's always good to have a baseline, but thinking about you know, enrollment studies, um, you know, capital projects, uh, uh, goal one's pretty heavy in and of itself. <laughs> um, you know, I want also, uh, as, as Damian mentioned in uh, the comment period, uh, you know, when you're creating SMART goals, also uh, making sure that we're uh, establishing goals that are achievable as well, um, right. realistic uh, uh, and time bound. So we're talking about one period, one year, 10 months, nine months now. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm trying to be, um, uh, deliberate in uh, creating uh, uh, goals that I think are uh, put us in a, a very good spot um, where we do achieve them, but also put us in a position to achieve them <laughs> this year. So, I, I actually think, like I know when we had our um, our retreat, we actually talked about developing documents, right, that began to articulate our communication plans. And I think there's a point at which creating those kinds of communication Protocol. protocols and making them widely available is something that we, we can do. I think you're really right about <coughs> making sure that we don't bite off more than we can sure. chew this year. And I think I'm actually really comfortable with the third goal because I feel like I feel like there are many different ways in which you are demonstrating in observable ways your commitment to achieving this goal. And I, I feel like we can point to those in a variety of different ways. And I mean, really, quite honestly, starting with your entry plan, right? And the meetings that you undertook to really begin to establish this. I mean, I think there are, I think there are a number of things we can point to. Um, and so I'm actually really comfortable with this knowing that as you get to know the community better, this may be something that, you know, moving to one of those protocols uh, later in the year would make sense. I, 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 I yeah, I, I don't know. I'm comfortable as well. Um, and perhaps it's maybe because I've had a little bit more opportunity working with you, Dr. Benante. <laughs> um, I'm thinking that John, maybe taking this from a different perspective where he's thinking, he did mention um, the board should consider distinct goals specifically for communication, board of ed to the community. Um, so perhaps it's not necessarily Dr. Benante right. only. Um, right, I think exactly. John's, and that's something, and I, I had this conversation with John and I said, look, communication and transparency has been the board's two major goals, and when we hired Dr. Benante, the first two things we said to him were transparency and communication. Um, so that's, I feel like it's been a, a goal of ours. Um, 
And I said, it's not something we're going to let drop off the table, obviously. Um, yes, there are maybe are different ways that we should be able to communicate. We've tried many. Um, but And it's also the responsibility of everybody getting involved and want to communicate with us as well, um, in my opinion, in a fashion that's effective. Um, so that's kind of where I'm coming at from the board angle. I don't know if you all feel that we should develop completely separate goals where we identify communication as one of our board. Um, no, I think we all agree that having uh, district goals be also the board's goals makes a lot of sense, not just because they tend to be of similar fashion, but because it's, um, it's the right sentimentality that we're all here to work together. Right. And we're all here working together and supporting each other, working towards the same vision. If we have different sets of goals that they may not always be supporting one another, then that doesn't make a lot of sense. So I like the idea of doing it as one uh, set of goals for all of us. Um, and I also am comfortable with goal three not having clear parameters. However, I also think that there are ways to measure if we're communicating effectively. I mean, there, there are pl things in place that we could do down the road if we wanted to. You know, surveying the community is the hardest thing to do. But in smaller groups, surveying employees, surveying staff, surveying students, right. that's actually much more manageable and probably <clears throat> fruitful. And it's, we've talked about that. We've talked about doing that, yeah. Many times, um, surveys. It's the um, community it's, at large is, I mean, that's where it's so hard to survey. Um, but, you know, maybe you, you could count, you know, how many people come to a budget vote and what are the yeses and the noes? You know, is that something sure. that is measurable? How many letters of complaint or concern do we get in a year? That Maybe that's a, something that you could measure. I mean, there, I think there are things that could be measured, um, but I think the community is the hardest thing to measure. Hmm. Um, but I don't think we need to tackle that separately right here, right now, this year. Sure. But, and I also think we have to let Dr. Benante be new and figure Thanks. out. <laughs> <laughs> we do. I, and we have to let him figure out for himself what's going to work, what's not going to work. And it, it, rather than for us to define saying this is what's going to be what we're going to judge you on, I think, I think we have to give him some leeway to figure out how he can deal with the community, how, what are his strengths and weaknesses, how he can go into the community, how he can come out of the community, and not just the community at large, but the administrators, the teachers. You have to be able to go in and try things and fail, and it's going to be okay, and not with us giving you a line of, this is the number I want, this sure. is what we need to see. <laughs> so I think we have to leave it a little bit open, um, because he's new. We have to give him some leeway to, to do his job and do it well on his own terms. So did John express comfort with this uh, set of measures? I or read comfort in that email John sent. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just basically, uh, and again, I just reiterated that obviously communication is, has always been uh, right. one of the board's goals, um, and we continue to work at it. Um, it's not something that we're just going to say, okay, we'll leave it up to Dr. Benante. That's not how this works. So. Yeah. Um, I'm comfortable keeping um, goals all together. So, yeah. so if we're good, uh, we'll put these on for adoption at the next meeting. Uh, and then good. we'll talk about how to communicate them uh, out to our various constituent groups. Great. Thanks for your feedback on that. Great. I really appreciate it. Hmm. Uh, the second piece, I don't know. Uh, so I provided the board with some backup information. I think it was in a Friday report or two ago <laughs> regarding uh, resolutions for contracts over one hundred thousand um, dollars. So there's two ways to operate here. Um, if the board wanted to uh, re-adopt its old resolution uh, regarding that contracts in excess of one hundred thousand dollars will be posted on the district website. Um, and otherwise made pub be made publicly available, uh, we certainly can do that. Just keep in mind that a resolution should then be acted upon every year. Um, I think just one recommendation is to do that for this year, if that's what the board desires. 
but then work towards establishing it as policy so it wouldn't require the board to reauthorize or react uh, uh, upon the resolution each year. Um, so. so since we have last met and discussed this, um, John is proposing that uh, he believes it would be useful that the Board of Ed have the option to authorize posting of other contracts as determined as well, for example, the SRO um, contract. Um, I don't see any harm in doing that. Again, my concern, I think, that I brought up at the last meeting was we kind of have to find the right process to get all of these uh, contracts. Right, who's going to be in charge? <laughs> I think that's really the big issue. It's not that we don't want to put um, these contracts up because they've been on the website before. It's just we have to find the right process. Yeah. Um, so for now, as they've come up, uh, I've been we've been finding them <laughs> and then scanning them into a PDF and then I will ask Megan to post them to the district website. So Megan's updated a few of those over the course of uh, the last few months. Um, of course, we were transitioning the website for a period of right. time, so uh, there may have been uh, a bit of a, a, a lag. Uh, but moving forward, as we become aware of them or as we're acting on them at a board meeting, you know, I would take the con. I would just need clarity on any that are under a hundred thousand dollars, but we want to post. Um, just would need that direction from the board, uh, so uh, I could then work with Megan to make sure that they were up there. One other note, just for the community, I guess, is that some of these contracts, like New Tech, um, well, we start with some of the labor contracts. There's a very clear place on our website to put those uh, because we have employment resources, employee groups. You'll see the HFA contract, the Administrators Association contract, my work agreement, uh, Ms. Dinio's work agreement. So that makes sense for such agreements to be placed right there. Uh, New Tech, I wouldn't necessarily put that there. It doesn't really have anything to do with employment resources. It's a contract. So I'm just trying to think about, well, what, where would the best place for that be? Um, we really should have a tab for teaching and learning or curriculum and instruction on our website. We don't now. You know, in the future when we create that, I don't want to make more work to just get that posted. Uh, so bear with us where we post these. I'll try to find a place that makes the most sense for the way the website is set up now. Uh, as we expand the website, uh, we'll find a better place uh, for them. But bear with me as I'll try to make the best decision with what's available to us. So the resolution, I guess, that we should propose should not necessarily say resolution for contracts over 100,000. We yeah. can restate it to say resolution of posting of contracts to the website or Sounds fine. something <laughs> to, to that. So it doesn't, you know. Um, well, except I think it's also really important that the resolution, keeping communication in mind, I mean, we want to make it really clear to the public what the board sets out to do when we don't have a process for deciding how to post contracts or which contracts under a hundred thousand dollars to to post and so right. I don't I don't know the best way to do it I mean I also just I mean I'm trying to balance the notion of transparency which I'm totally for but I want to remind everyone anybody who wants to see these contracts all they have to do is go into the district office. And I think the idea of, of making, I, I, I don't know. So that's all. I, 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 don't, I don't think everything needs to be on the website. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with people having to exert a modicum, you know, a bit of, of effort to access information. I don't think everything has to, has to be right right so, there so maybe I mean we do need to make a note reminding people that they can go to the the school district office saying that yeah I don't know want it, that I guess John's concern was he didn't want to limit it to just specific objects so well, realistically the idea, though, is that if it's a hundred thousand dollars it's a big commitment, commitment from the district right. and that's why the contract is being posted because it was really for vendors. It's not really it's, for people. Right. right. It's for vendors that we're paying $100,000 or more to, and that was the idea, um, I believe, behind the original And, resolution. I mean, in reality, we don't have that many contracts mm -hmm. that were, you know, we have new tech, we have an SRO, we're going to have an SPO. Um, so we may not be adding and people may be questioning why we're not adding contracts it's because 
there aren't any to add. So there's that other end. But then it also this. opens up of like, well, then if we're, should we be posting a contract that for ten thousand right. dollars? Right. I mean, then where does it end? I mean, the idea right. of saying that it's a hundred thousand dollars or more was to say these are companies or vendors that we have made a commitment to, and that the public might, you know, want to want to know that um, in a little more detail. Um, but less than $100,000, that's like par for the course. I mean, there's constant vendor contracts coming in and out for food or whatever. Right. I guess I don't, I don't know the appropriate way to frame resolution, to, to, to state them, to word them, to frame them. The over $100,000 I feel comfortable doing. But if we don't have a clear process, philosophy, motivation for what's going to be under that, I, I, I don't want to leave it open. I want us to be really clear what we, not that we're opposed to doing the other, but what we clearly anticipate being able to do in an efficient and effective way. Right. So, I, Because as soon as we leave one out, it looks like we're not being transparent. And every, people can go and find the information if they want. Right. It, you know, it's not hidden. Uh, I'm okay either way uh, unless we word it as major contracts and we there's no, there's no yeah for that. it becomes subjective. subjective unless at every meeting where a contract is proposed we're gonna we would have to vote on whether no. it's, that's crazy <laughs> like go on to the website and the only other thing i can think of is that you list the language the resolution as it was um, uh, articulated in the past with the caveat that additional contracts uh, upon approval by the board may also that, be approved. That's uh, that's with, that's yeah. fine, right? Mm -hmm. If that's we if we need that to have the option of right. posting others that we want to, right. that's that's great because it leaves it up to our discretion. Right. Lots of things are up to our discretion. Right. I mean, that's and once Jen and John go through the board docs review once again <laughs> this year, people will know how to find the contract by searching board docs as well. There you so, go. There yeah. you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'll uh, take the language from the previous resolution, mm -hmm. uh, and then I will add a sentence related to uh, additional contracts with board approval, and I'll you know, flesh that out. Um, and we'll add that for the next agenda. And if we can put a reminder on the website where these yes. are saying, oh and please know, you can go in and look at any contract in the district office. Or you office. can search board docs. <laughs> or you can search board docs. Right? I mean, But they'd only be on bit. board docs if they have happened recently, correct? No, well, you can search the SROs. I, mean, I guess we have date contracts SRO, uh, oh, You can actually search board docs. Yeah. yeah. Pretty, but. I mean, it's cumbersome, but it's there. It's an option, I yeah. should say. And it's not really cumbersome. If you type SRO in, it's going to give you everything that's been related to the SRO, right. which you search through right. then you just the meetings, and you have to dig. So, OK. Great. Moving on to board workshop topics. Um, I proposed uh, an overview of topics for the board's consideration for this school year. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so what I'm looking for is just some, uh, we'll have some discussion regarding what I mean by school detail reports here. But also, we have some spaces here to, to fill um, uh, on workshop topics. So I'd like to hear a little bit from the board on what you think would be uh, helpful to you. Uh, and the dates here are totally arbitrary. So I just use them as placeholders. Do you um, have it as, a, as an email? It's in, email. What's the date of the email? That's right. Yesterday. Yesterday. Sorry about that. That's it should right. Be there I was looking for it earlier tonight. And I was like, I know we just saw it. Uh, that being said, on the while uh, Margaret is searching for the email, uh, so I was wondering, our principals here provide uh, an update at each of the yes, workshop yes. meetings. It's a bit uh, brief in in detail. Thank you. Got it? <laughs> Got it. Thank you. I thought it may be helpful to both the principals and also to the board that if we were to designate a workshop meeting for them to provide a more comprehensive overview of what they were working on in their respective buildings with their 
um, instructional uh, teams. Uh, you heard, for example, Dr. Silky allude to the work that her building is undergoing this year with respect to social emotional learning um, and also its connection to the work that may be going on at the elementary school under the direction of Mr. Wallach. I thought it would be helpful that if we reserve a designated space and time uh, for a workshop topic to dig into that a little bit more where our board, uh, where Dr. Silky or Mr. Wallach or Ms. Sniffen respectively could provide a presentation, a more comprehensive overview, allow the time uh, for the board to uh, discuss with our administration what's going on with respect to that work, potentially how the board can support or what supports may be necessary uh, from the board to continue that work moving forward um, and uh, have those as each separate workshop topics. Uh, throughout the year. So I put them in as the latter part of the year, and that's what I mean by elementary school detail report, middle school detail report, and high school detail report. Um, that being said, uh, Jen had uh, requested an update regarding social emotional learning, just to be apropos to uh, somewhat what Dr. Silky happened to be mentioning tonight. Uh, that being said, as a, as a separate uh, item. And it very well may be because Dr. Silky may choose not to include the social emotional learning component as her as part of her middle school report. I was specifically asking about the um, the new mental health curriculum new mental health curriculum um, that uh, the state has mandated right. and you know how it's all going. Got it. And I almost feel like we should kind of get. Um, I know it's we put it. Well, it's tentatively scheduled for June eighteenth for a reason because you need some time to figure it sure, out and right. pull it out. But I almost think we, the board, should hear the updates on what um, the state has indicated. Sure. Uh, that one, I, I don't, I put it there arbitrarily. I also, there was some method there. I'd like to have a director of PPS in place <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would be helpful. to That'd support be nice. with that uh, particular one. Um, but yes, uh, these uh, reports that are, uh, you know, are certainly up for discussion and how we want to structure them and where they would like to be. The only last note I'd want to make is that there should be some sort of mid-year district goals update, I felt, given our discussion tonight. And uh, uh, we should have some update around there. That tends to be time, too, when you would do a superintendent evaluation uh, uh, check-in sometime mid-year so we can make those things consistent with one another. Uh, that one, I think the date is probably right around where we would want to do it. Um, but everything else is up for discussion. So, so I have a, a possible topic that I'd like to see added. Um, so in 2016, New York State adopted new science standards. And um, I know the, the state has a transition plan for how to implement them. I'd be curious to know what our own district's plan is. Got it. I mean, that's just one possibility. Um, as I brought up before, uh, the possibility of doing demographic transportation study. Uh, right. um, are those, is that one thing or is, are those two different things? Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I mean, two, I know they, they, they relate to each they other. They do, but, but they, I mean, they're in terms two of different study. studies. Um, but when you embark on one, often they will be provided in the same review. But it's two oh, separate processes that have to be um, initiated, uh, but the same entity can do them. I see. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. So perhaps that's one. Um, just to chime in, uh, John's some of the, his recommendations are curriculum overview, technology, school finance, and budgeting. I feel like the curriculum overview may come in um, the and the detail reports and the district goals and district yeah. goals. Um, school finance and budgeting uh, starting in January. I feel like that's almost <laughs> the only thing we talk about at uh, workshop meetings. The one thing Ann and I discussed, though, with respect to that, it would probably be helpful, especially for me, uh, just to provide the board with an anticipated overview of not just what our budget uh, process will be, because uh, that's somewhat well-articulated, similar process each year, um, you know, back starting with when we adopt a budget and working back from that uh, but what processes maybe we will seek to employ with the community uh, to make sure that they're well informed about the budget process also articulating what my process will be in working with the district administration uh, to identify uh, needs uh, that may sure. present 
and going through that with the board before we get into the, the thick of it uh, in January uh, may be helpful. Now, that's not or to December, say- Or December. Or December or November. And we'll start to prepare that lovely uh, right. budget calendar. Uh, budget calendar. And um, maybe we can incorporate some of that into right. the budget. Calendar. That's fine. And we can have more than one topic one night. That doesn't need to be an elaborate uh, presentation. But I think spending a good 15 to 20 minutes on it with the board, making sure, again, uh, we're all on the same page with what's going on behind the scenes uh, and how we uh, come to construct an administration's recommendation uh, may be helpful uh, to the board and to the community. Great. And technology, we've, um, I think we bring that one up every year. Um, but that's actually one, I could be wrong. But that's actually one that I wonder if we want to do this year. You're saying yes. No, I'm saying so I think we need to hold off. I think right I, I do think we need to hold off because I think there's been a lot going on. I know the board has had a lot of questions. I think it's something that will be bet that correct me if I'm wrong, that that will be in a better position to discuss and review as a board at the end of after after Dr. Benante's been here one year. As the technology as a board liaison to the technology committee, that's what I think. Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree. Can um, I throw out something completely mm -hmm. new that we've never ever really yeah, addressed before? I'm kind of thinking we're at the point where we need to talk about what kind of guidance and help we give kids with the college process, the college, the writing the essays, figuring out which schools you want. We have one guidance counselor and there are 87 kids up there this year. That's a lot for one guidance counselor to deal with. Uh, what, you know, should we be talking about what, what is the school's responsibility to help with these kids? What is expected of the parents? What are we doing to set them up to achieve and to, to reach their goals of wherever it is they want to go? I think actually Ms. Sniffen can speak to that. I think so um, too. In the high school. And as a parent of two high schoolers now, I learned a very valuable resource thanks to Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> the College Board uh, website. And it's been phenomenal. And a lot of that is explained right on that website so right but i'm wondering and, if, right, it's, if, if it's if it's something. communicated and it has been communicated um the guidance counselor does do um a ninth and tenth grade parent night um maybe it's something that we need to do with the juniors again too even though you know we're doing with the ninth and tenth maybe it's um but i'm wondering if it's something we should look at as a board as someone coming in and saying this is what we have could could it could we help? Could we help somehow get that information out there? Could we help? Could we help the guidance counselors somehow? Do, do you know? Are there different things that that we should know and and hear from them to see if there's resources that we can expand for them in the budget, in the timing, in the in those kind of things? I guess I come at this from such a weird. I guess I have like five comments I want to make. The comment I'm gonna make is: Is that something that would fit in with Miss Sniffin's, Mrs. Sniffin's? high school detail report. I guess the thing, to be honest with you, I feel like the district is going, not that that is an important thing for us to accomplish, but I feel like the district is just going to be faced with so many other demands. And I think Haldane does that really well, but but you obviously feel like we may not be doing it as well as we need to. I, don't I know. feel like, um, I feel like there's a lot of parents out there that are figuring it out on their own. And if we could help, then we should. Well, maybe it would be interesting to run that by Ms. Sniffen and see what her perspective is. Right. Or Ms. I, Moscow. I, yes, Ms. Uh, well, yeah, I would, I think, so there's a request for information, right? What, what are we doing in this particular area? And, and I think it's a reasonable request. Um, whether or not it has to be a separate workshop topic is is probably up for discussion but you know the fact that uh, you know we have a, a question or maybe a concern about what we may be doing to provide students doesn't uh, there's room for that and getting that information from the administration um, at some point you know, I'm the really looking year. at does she need support so that we can support these kids sure 
Sure. Uh, that whether or not that's a workshop topic, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, if that's uh, you know if that's what the board desires, that's fine. But that does, if it's not a workshop topic, doesn't mean we can't look into that, right. get that information, and, and uh, provide it to our to our board, and then have further discussion if necessary and desired. Right. I'm also hearing, I feel like we're all starting to sense that there's a lot to do this year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm not even talking about you, Dr. Benante, but I feel enough coffee and cold spring to keep me going for a while. Here. Um, <laughs> so I'm wondering if we could be using these workshops uh, this year to not be bringing up new uh, issues, but to be honing in on the current issues, such as the safety audit that we did last year and you know not that i think a demographic study and a transportation study are super important and are going to be super important but i'd rather spend some time talking about the audit that we just did and make sure we're really giving that the time and space that it needs um, as a group and also the um buildings and grounds and bond referendum stuff right, i mean there's a lot to talk about with those topics that um, will need our attention. Right. I, I really, actually, I really agree with Jen about that because there is, w when we had that meeting that as a workshop topic meeting last year, I felt like it did went a long way to help get the rest of the board up to speed about what the issues were, you know, to the level, not to the level that Laura was understanding them, but really increasing our understanding. The buildings we're, and grounds. The buildings that's and grounds, about. sorry. Yeah. Sorry, mm. that's the one I was, yes. Yeah, for sure. Because if you're, I if a board member huge. isn't on the buildings and grounds Well, and the, and the buildings and grounds goes hands in hand with the safety, health and safety audit. Sure. Absolutely. I, I agree with that. Um, and so I think that's more important I mean, I had brought up this issue of science, which I do think is really important, but there's also a way in which I'm perfectly willing to trust that. Or it's something that it could be incorporated into the detail report. Well, that's that what I was thinking, level. that it, it's, you know, yeah. We can I help identify some of the things that we'd like to see, perhaps, in these mm. detail reports. Such as guidance department. Mm -hmm. Right. Social emotional stuff. No, I think our, our administration would appreciate that. Sometimes uh, we don't have a standard format that we've used in the past for that. But I think it would be helpful uh, at least to get these started with providing some direction and, and shaping a little bit more based on what the board is curious about. Um, the buildings and grounds, uh, definitely. I'm sorry I failed to include that because we actually, at our buildings and grounds committee meeting, talked about presenting certain information that we discussed at our last meeting to the uh, board at an upcoming meeting. So it certainly very well may fit for sooner rather than later. Um, the safety audit. It, obviously, we spent some time in exec session uh, with uh, Mr. Guglieri discussing the audit that he had conducted last year. Um, and the reason why it was conducted in executive session is for <laughs> obvious yeah. reasons. Um, we're not going to uh, elaborate on all the details of that right. safety audit with the public um, for obvious reasons. Uh, but it's not something that um, was conducted and is being ignored. Um, what the gentleman did uh, suggest is what he's done in the past is had some um, parent nights where he's invited parents or staff or community in um, and basically talked about different scenarios and um, ways that it could be addressed and helpful information from a perspective that um, you're not completely exposing all the details. So that's maybe something that um, we can do as a workshop topic. We can open up uh, to another uh, night or. Yeah, I think that uh, one, the administration is going to have to work with the audit and decide what we want to address in this given year. Um, and we could do so, I think, uh, broadly um, in a way that, um, you know, can be shared openly with the public without sacrificing or in any way putting our, um, you know, students at any further risk.
uh, by exposing weaknesses um, in our system. Uh, and that would make for a worthwhile workshop topic. I, I think it also, depending on what those measures are, may have an implication in our budget. Um, so uh, may lend itself to a discussion again sooner before we get too far in uh, to the budget cycle. Uh, so if it were to show up in the administration's recommendation, everybody has an understanding of where it came from and it's transparent. The background work with parents and whatnot would obviously have to be a part of that. Um, as well. Yeah, I was thinking about the timing uh, with the budget as well because the buildings and grounds stuff and the safety stuff needs to be kind of in our minds as we're developing budget. But also, I'm wondering if it, the elementary, middle, and high school detail reports are also going to have elements to them that regard budget. Sure. Uh, which means we have to do everything before like February. So, <laughs> you know, I don't know how it all works uh, timing wise but I, I do feel like it's nice or it's actually not just nice it's important to have this understanding before we go into the budget deeply yep. and unfortunately well fortunately unfortunately for example the b and g meets once a month um, so it's you know the timing of although I guess the bond boundary. referendum that we're talking so, about doesn't have to be with the budget vote if no, I, I think we're prepared to, though, recommend some things or at least provide an overview that would put us on a timeline to make it consistent with that. Okay. Um, well then. Now, we could always slow that down. Um, we're not going to speed it up. We're just not in a place where we can do that. Uh, but not to get too far into what will be a future discussion item, uh, likely next month, um, we have work that needs to get done um, that is at a very basic level. Um, so what our discussion at the Buildings and Grounds Committee uh, was was putting aside for now the bigger ticket items that maybe were more of a topic of uh, discussion and coming to some agreement on what we know needs to needs to occur on our campus and using this cycle as an opportunity to present that to the community, give us the opportunity to generate some you know, get the capital that we need to complete those projects um, while we continue to discuss the bigger ticket items that uh, we're probably going to want to spend some more more time on um, so just to segue that we can discuss you know in the in, in the near future because uh, we've done a lot of work buildings and grounds have talked has talked about this for for quite some time so you know their background on it was was pretty uh, deep and they they knew the history they didn't really take any more discussion with the buildings and grounds isn't or isn't taking much discussion with the buildings are going to come to some consensus I believe on, on a few key items that would be of real help to the school and um, I think we could uh, you know engage our community in a way where they would see that as well um, the safety um, recommendations again we have a base that we're working from there the, the audit's been completed uh, the work uh, you know that needs to be done is outlined somewhat in that audit uh, so working with that will not take long um, and some of these evenings the reports aren't meant to be you know elaborate one-hour discussions we might want to combine a buildings and grounds discussion uh, with the safety audit because they're interrelated one thing I said to the buildings and grounds committee was we may have some recommendations from our safety audit that we want to include in a in a capital project that would help yeah. make our school safe yeah. um, and so that's all on the up and up so maybe we combine those two mm -hmm. um, so I, th I think you know we've talked about quite a few things that to work with um, where we could have some really good uh, discussion at a board level um, but it won't present too much of a um, of an obstacle, if you will, uh, or the administration will not be inundated. Um, I do agree we want to be mindful of these detail reports and the timeline, the, the timeline that they're on. It's not to say we can't have elementary and middle school on the same night. We just want to be cognizant of, of how much we're asking them to report so you know it's something they can pull together that's reasonable and it and we're not here till midnight <laughs> uh and you know keeping the high school separate i think is important um, but that could push that up a little sooner um, so uh, i think there's plenty to work with here okay. um, depending on what and where you want to go uh, if you want me to work with it and then come back and recommend okay so here's what we think maybe you could outline. recommend a good uh timing sure. based on what we've discussed tonight discussed and sometimes things come up 
throughout the yes. year. So, or we find we need to have more time for budget or bond referendum or something. So, you know, even if we left like April 23rd open or, or something, you know, it's, I personally don't think it's bad to leave a slot a little open. flexible. I mean, what ended up happening last year is that we ended up adding um, we added, added workshop, workshop dates, dates, to dates. Do. so you know yeah. we could be flexible as uh, we can be flexible. That's right. We move along. Um, can I just ask a clarification? Sure. Question, Laura? So on May twenty first, when we have the budget vote, do we do a workshop topic on that evening? No, um, we usually head to a concert. Yeah, there's Got usually it. some concert think. scheduled. Okay. Pre. Uh, <laughs> election results and so we convene at like eight o'clock it's our kids performing it's yes. not a concert right. like, yeah. not going to Springsteen. no, no, we're no. Not. <laughs> sorry <laughs> although that might be just, a good draw yeah, for although voters. the <laughs> 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 i was just gonna say that uh, um so so we convene at like eight and the election results come in around 9 30 9 15. got it all right uh hopefully 9 30. give julia some so just the only thing with um, having the B&G in October, um, we may want to move that down a little bit to give uh, the new director of facilities an opportunity, because um, if he's starting October 1st, um, you know. First board presentation <laughs> in two weeks. There is plenty we, for Mr. And, Boltros and to Ms. do. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, I know that both you and Miss Dinio will be more than happy to uh, step in and. Ann and I are ready to take the exam and uh, <laughs> get on the list, and we think we do pretty well. <laughs> um, one thing, uh, so yes, I, I, the the buildings and grounds work is likely going to need a couple of conversations with the board. What Ann and I will likely need to do, and uh, Mr. Botros in October, is to provide you with an overview of how we're thinking of framing this. Uh, we think there are certain elements that would come down to a, um, a referendum. We think there's work that needs to be done that may fall under the category of um, uh, an energy performance contract. Uh, and we think that there's work that, well, we know there's work that we have a capital repair reserve established. We talked about this already, uh, that we very well, you know, are ready to go about um, and start doing. Um, so we just want to give you the broad overview. I pretty much just gave it, but um, with a little more detail about what projects we may want to lump in in each of those categories before we now go out and get uh, prices and whatnot, um, which would require us to come back and, dis and discuss further with you. But we didn't want to get too far down the road with buildings and grounds without providing the board with a little bit more of a detail uh, overview of what we've been discussing. So Good. it's all clear. So just two updates maybe for um, next meeting. I'm just t kind of talking out loud is we need to get the uh, Buildings and Ground Committee minutes on uh, the agenda for next meeting as well as um, I'd like an update on the elementary bathrooms. I know the plans have been submitted to State Ed and all that, but it'd be good uh, to convey where we are in that process um, with the public. Yeah which there may not be much of an update, but it, it just... Um, sure. Let people know we didn't forget about it? Right. Yeah. Hmm. That it's in state ed's hands or wherever it is. Okay. Any additional communication from the public? No? Okay. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.